Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. We all understand how important it is to have instrumentation in any application. And when it comes to building distributed software applications or distributed systems, it is even more important to have instrumentation across different applications. And in a particular application, when we are making a call to a separate web service or a database or a cache, sometimes it is very important to understand which particular call is taking the most time when it comes to understand the performance issues of a particular service. And there are a couple of ways of doing this. One way is we can just do the instrumentation ourselves, meaning when we make a call to a software which is running as a web API, or when we call a database, we can have timer start, timer end, at the beginning of the call and at the end of the call, and then we can use the time difference taken and log it into some sort of logging software. So for that we can use, as for example, and log, and log into a cloud-based logging system or some sort of file-based or a data store where we can log the data and then we can use it for instrumentation. But there is a lot of code which goes around doing this. And then also when you are making changes, adding new components, it's always the new set of code that needs to be added just for the purpose of instrumentation. And sometimes it gets very tedious. This is where open telemetry helps us. So open telemetry is a open source observability framework. It is a vendor agnostic as well as vendor neutral API. And it provides SDK for almost all languages, including .NET. And open telemetry logs can be logged into variety of software, including cloud-based softwares for collecting and visualizing the data. In today's video, I'm just going to focus on using open telemetry to log. And for the logging purpose, I'm just going to use console log. So to start that, let us consider that we have this application, which is a street controller. And then I have another web service running, which is running on port 7283, which just returns weather information. So let's say the idea is the street controller provides a street view. And when we call the street view, we need to see who is the user who is calling the service. And then we go and get some weather data to see what will be the weather around the streets. Let's say that is the requirement. And for that purpose, we will need to call a database first. And in this case, let's say we're going to call SQL Server to get the user information. And then we are going to call a web API endpoint which provides the weather data. Now when we call this particular service, the street service, and if the street service is not performing well, it is very important to understand where the bottleneck is. Whether the bottleneck is in the database call or the bottleneck is in the external service call. And this is where we are going to use open telemetry. For the purpose of open telemetry, what I have done is I have installed the open telemetry.instrumentation.aspnet core, which is needed for instrumenting ASP.NET core application. And then it internally has a dependency on the open telemetry. Now, as of this video, I am using the 1.0.0 version of release candidate 9 of this. And apart from these, I am also using the open telemetry.instrumentation.http, which is going to help instrumenting an HTTP call. And then I'm using instrumentation.sql client, which is going to help instrumenting SQL client. And then I'm using the extension.hosting. And then I am using the exporter.console, which is going to export the open telemetry log into the console. 
And apart from the open telemetry, I'm using Dapper for accessing SQL Server. So now let's go here. So first thing what we are going to do is we're going to create a user provider for providing user information from database. And for that purpose, what we can do is we can create a new class and we can name it as user provider. And user provider is going to have a constructor which will take the connection string. And then it will have a single method, public user array get. And we can create the user class here. So we can say public class user. It has three properties, public int ID, name, and age, that's all, the user. So the user provider is going to return all the user from a database. And for that, we'll first create a connection create a SQL connection passing the connection string and I'll add the SQL client namespace and then I can just do return connection dot query and user and here I'm going to use a plain select statement and for the query I'm going to use the namespace for Depper. And the query is select the ID, name, age from our database that I have uh, demo and the employee database from there. Let me put this into the next line. And then here I'm just going to do two array because I'm returning an array. So that's about it. That's the user provider. Let me also extract an interface and I can put the interface into the same file for the time being. Okay, so this is the user provider. It's a very simple thing. It's just going into database and returning user. Now, if we have to instrument this in a traditional way, then here what we have to do is we have to add some sort of timer and we have to start the timer before the call and end the timer after the query executes and then log it. And as you can see, as, an, as more and more class we will have, it will be almost impossible to keep a track and keep adding. And every time we change the code, it is just a painful process. Whereas with open telemetry, we don't have to do any of these. And I'm going to show how that works. So this is the user provider. And then what we can do is in the controller, we can create a constructor. And here, what we can do is, first of all, we can take an HTTP client and user provider. So I'm going to declare both the field. And now here, what we can do is we can say var users equal to user provider dot get. So this is going to get all the users and then I can say var response is equal to client dot get a sync. And here I'll provide the URL for my website, which is returning the weather information. For that, I'm just using an existing service that I created earlier. So it's just weather information. So that's about it. Right now, I'm not doing anything. Let me put an await here. Right now, I'm not doing anything with this response or the user because this is immaterial for this demo. But in a real life scenario, these properties and values will be used for multiple purposes. 
Now here what we are trying to show is how we are going to instrument this call. So now what we, what we are going to do is we are going to go into the program and this is where we are going to add the instrumentation as well as other dependencies. So first let's add the dependencies that we have. So first dependency we have is an HTTP client. So we can do dot add HTTP client. So that's going to add HTTP client into the dependency injection container. The second thing we want is uh, the user provider. So for that we can do dot add singleton and we can say I user provider and new user provider and here we're going to provide the connection string and let me add the namespace and I'm just going to copy paste the connection string here which connects to uh, SQL Express database which I have installed locally into a uh, demo database. So once we have that, once we have that, now next thing what we want to do is we want to add the open telemetry. So for adding open telemetry, what we'll do is we'll do builder dot services dot add open telemetry tracing that's what we want to add and it takes a configuration action and that is what we are going to use to configure everything so now first thing we are going to do is we want to add the console exporter so we'll say b dot add console exporter and it is part of the namespace open telemetry dot trace so we are going to add that after that what we are going to do is we want to add a source which is our service dot, dot add source and for the service name let's declare a service name here because we're going to use it more than one time And for the service name, we can say street service. So we can pass the service name here. And then after adding source, we are going to set the resource builder. So we can say set resource builder. And for the resource builder, what we can do is we can say resource builder and we'll add the namespace open telemetry dot resources and then we can do resource builder dot it has the create default static method so we'll use this create default and then we are going to add service to it and we're going to provide the same service name and it also will take a version number and there are other parameter we can pass, but we are just going to provide the service version here. And for the version, we can give 1.0.0. This is where we set the resource builder. And after setting the resource builder, now we are going to add all the instrumentation that we want to add. Now the first instrumentation that we want to add is for ASP.NET Core instrumentation. So we can say dot add ASP.NET Core instrumentation. And then we want to add SQL Server instru instrumentation. So we can say dot add SQL Client instrumentation. And then finally, we also want to add instrumentation for the HTTP client call. So we can say dot add HTTP client instrumentation. And now our instrumentation is completely ready. And this is when we can, let me close this with a semicolon. So now our instrumentation setup is already ready. So as you can see, all we had to do is add the entire instrumentation of the open telemetry into the dependency injection framework. And that's all we had to do. And now if we run our application, the entire service will be instrumented 
including the outgoing database call, outgoing HTTP call, and everything will be logged with precisely how much time it took for each of the execution. So let me run this program now. And once the program starts, we are going to go into Swagger. And from the Swagger, we are going to execute the whole get API and see the entire instrumentation in the output. And if we look into the instrumentation, we can see already it is logging for Swagger. It's already logging for all the Swagger call. Now let's go back. And this time we are going to try to execute this street API. So we are going to try it out. Execute. And we got 200 response back. Now if we go back to the telemetry and lot, let's go from down. So here it is showing that the street API and the success came back as 200. And for the street API, it used the ASP.NET Core and it took you know total this much of time. This is the total duration and this is the start time. And if we go a little bit up here, we can see it made a call to localhost weather and for the local host weather, we can see it took this many milliseconds for the execution. This is the duration, what time it started. And if we go further up, we can see it made a call to SQL Express. And then for the SQL Express, we can see that it is using open telemetry.sql client. And here we can see the duration took for that execution and what time it started. So as you can see, tech that we used inside of our API for every single call, it recorded how much time took for every single component, which is basically the SQL server, as well as an outgoing HTTP call, apart from the web API, which we called. And as you can see, this is extremely powerful when it comes for debugging and understanding the performance issues and bottleneck in a highly distributed environment. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. But in the next video, I'm going to get into some of the other concept related to open telemetry. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any question regarding open telemetry about this video, please leave a comment and I'll answer it. And thanks so much for watching this video.